it's interesting when we when we drop into um, the experience of our bodies and into the senses uh, because this is a naturally a an experience of non-judgment because judging can only happen when there are uh, when there are words when there's language and uh, the body's communication is wordless so when we drop into the senses we um, we're invited into this space of uh, of, of non-judging of not needing to compare with a past or future experience um, and so whilst we we practice this in in meditation it can be perhaps um particularly challenging to bring it to communication to bring this quality of non-judging because um when we communicate with each other we inevitably are using words we're inevitably using language uh, and so the tendency to move into that evaluating, comparing, uh, judging mode um, is is uh, is strong. Um, actually, a quote from Marshall Rosenberg, who uh, who developed nonviolent communication, uh, he said, um, "The mismatch of our ever changing world and our relatively static language is part of our problem." So language kind of fixes us in a in a view often because uh, words are used to describe uh, experiences, but they only do so in a kind of categorizing way, um, which separates one thing from another rather than perhaps tends to see the the ongoing flow of experience and the interrelationships between them, which is very difficult to convey in in language. Um, so. We can help ourselves in this um, by seeing if we can practice coming back to observing, um, which maybe keeps us a little closer to um, the direct experience um, rather than perhaps the opinions that we have about that, that experience. So just by observing rather than moving into judgment, we can, we can perhaps um, use our words and our language in a way that doesn't um, doesn't sort of trigger that judging mode, that reactivity that can so often be met um, by another as um, you know somehow as a, as oppressive or as um, critical um, and and is likely to provoke resistance. Um, so perhaps you know part of the skill in communication is to see if we can stay in this observing space, which is not easy. Um, so to give an example, um, you know, uh, we might say um, the tendency might be to say, uh, well, um, Steve is lazy. You know, so, for example, um, whereas perhaps if we were moving more to an observing space where we use a specific uh, example of something that happened, we might say um, Steve didn't get out of bed till midday today. You know, this is, you know, we can we can kind of give ourselves these examples, um, you know, uh, rather than saying, uh, you know, Jenny's Jenny's no good at tennis. We might observe uh, Jenny lost in the first round of the tournament. So um, if we can practice this, um, we can kind of lose some of the charge that comes. Um, from from like loaded communications that add um, add judgments onto onto descriptions, um, and and of course the reality is is that we're all working with um, difficult circumstances. We're all working with this being human. We're all affected by our pasts. We're all working within the constraints of um, our worldviews, and it's difficult to step out of those. Um, we're working with the context of our environment, whatever it is, and we're influenced by all of these. So we have a, we do have limits to our choices about what we see, and um, and our choice to relate to what we see. However, if we can practice mindfulness, we can come back to this place of sensing and observing the sensing, and maybe we give ourselves some possibility of of recognizing that we're not completely separate self-contained and therefore 
Um, we don't have complete agency. We're dependent actually on the whole. We're dependent on each other. So if we can learn, actually, we can only really learn together. Um, little by little. And so communication in a non-judgmental way uh, can, um, you know, can help us to perhaps see ourselves and others um, in this in this way, in this connected way. Um, all the different factors that lead to who we are and what we do. And so perhaps to be able to understand how we can get caught perhaps in particular unhelpful behaviours or reactions or indeed judgments. So the possibility of stepping back and seeing it um, is, is the starting point. A um, couple of examples of this. Uh, um, Martin Luther King, very skillfully, um, he would describe um, the people who were part of, say, the Ku Klux Klan. He would describe them as having a, a, a disorder of view rather than inherently evil. It's, it's kind of a disorder of view and actually the intention and to, to help actually to shift, shift the view into into something that was more connected and and, and helpful. Um, Nelson Mandela Della Simbley said that you know with understanding and support we can actually enable others to be the best that they can be. Like holding holding a space. So we can we can work to um, on our own practice and and bringing that as best we can um, to to our relationships with others, while also recognizing that this is not easy because we get triggered too. I've heard it said, the best way to remove an enemy is to make them your friend. But that may not be simple. It may take a lot of time and patience and understanding. And uh, it also doesn't mean that we roll over, you know, to, um, you know, and allow ourselves to be, uh, um, abused in some way it's more more a case of of being willing to come without uh, um, an agenda of manipulation and then maybe possibility can arise so in our practice we come back to um, anchoring in the body coming back to the senses noticing what's going on internally and then seeing if we can bring this to the communication and see what arises from here so, and try it out. 